Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, guys, this is Bruce Marshall with Simpler Trading doing the nightly market update for Wednesday, April the 5th. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's trading is going great this week. We've had uh, quite a quite a turnaround from last week. We had that big rally. Um, I'll tell you kind of what I make of that and, you know, how we can trade it. Um, I've got on the screen here, as I always do, I have the ES over here, I have the RUT, and I have the NASDAQ, and I watch them on smaller time frame charts here, watching the ticks, and this is just a multi time frame indicator um, here set to different time frames. But, um, you know, it is always interesting to see how these correlate. Typically, the NASDAQ and the ES or the SPX will you know, will kind of move in sync or one leads to the other. Typically the NASDAQ will lead, but that's not been the case in a little while since the techs have given, kind of given up a lot. Um, we're in a kind of a weird market. We had um, uh, bonds going crazy today. Um, it's just, you know, it's just really, really tough, tough market to kind of, to try to figure out to begin with. Um, so we'll jump in here and we'll take a look at the charts. Uh, like I said, the two-year Treasury today went to the lowest rate since September. Um, just not sure what's going to go on with, you know, with bond market or the stock market for that matter. But I'll tell you what I think it's going to do. So let's jump back over here. Um, again, this is the ES, and the light gray is the and the ES is a futures contract. Um, Light gray is the overnight session. This was yesterday. This is today. The black section right here is the cash session. So we opened here, a little pop up, and then immediately failed. Um, these red lines are they are voodoo lines. Those are fire line voodoo lines, which are based on Elliott wave. Um, we kind of hung around there. These typically are very strong as far as support or resistance. Um, kind of went through them a couple times, ended up bouncing up a little bit. Um, I was thinking that we would get a 4,100 um, pin on SPX today, and we did not. Um, let me switch this over to SPX. It's always fun, interesting, exciting to watch the end of the day stuff and see, you know, if we can get a pin, like on a butterfly or something like that. Um, we got to 409. Oh, I, I did a room session today and I was saying, you know, I'd probably do a 4100 and do 10 point wide butterfly. That would have at least either not lost any or made it a little bit, but didn't, you know, you can make it wider and it would capture it a little bit more, but uh, then it gets more expensive if you make it wider. So um, I haven't been doing a lot of those lately. I used to, if you've seen any of the videos I've done over the last several years, you know that I do a lot of those. Um, end of the day things especially since you know last year i believe it was in may that they switched to every day of the week on spx you know the zero dte and now those things are probably the most widely traded you know things we've got out there but um but you know that because of that um in the institutional people are trading them as well um they do tend to move around a lot especially in you know at the end of the day which makes it harder than it used to be to try to get a pin on some of these things um, and when I say a pin, I'm talking about if we do a butterfly trade and we risk, say, here's our butterfly trade and we risk, say, 500 bucks here, risk. And if we pin and we end up right there at, say, 4,100 or something like that, typically you can make about 10x, so this would be 5,000. And that's pretty good, right? Um, and we had quite a few of those hit over the last year or so, not so much in the last, say, six months just because of this... Um, whack-a-mole market that we've been in it's just been tough to get and sometimes you end up here make less sometimes you overshoot here sometimes you end up way out here sometimes you end up way out here and so it was a wide variety of outcomes on trades like that um, but let's look at this so SPX uh, we had a tree line here the green line is a tree line it did hold and we ended up coming back up to the white line which is a snow line um, and we did kind of hang there you know, for a little bit. So let's take this thing out to a longer time frame, and I'm going to switch these to my regular voodoo lines. Give me a second to load. Okay. So this is a trailing one year chart of the S&P. And as you can see, you know, we 
we stopped on the tree line there. We kind of, we were all over it. We did go through it uh, here on a little flush down and come back up. And then, you know, we've hit this fire line here, you know, quite a few times. And there, you know, sometimes it holds exactly like right there and right here and right here. Um, here, you know, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say. You would like to think that this thing was, is going to stay above this fire line. Again, this is SPX. Um, and we bounce higher. And I think that's what happens here, um, you know, in the short run. Now, let me tell you what else is happening. It's always, you know, there's always a cause and effect, right? And the cause right now is going to be um, what's coming up on the uh, news and events catalog or calendar, such as next week we've got CPI. On Tuesday, we've got PPI. On third or uh, C CPI is here on the twelfth on Wednesday and PPI is on thirteenth. Uh, Friday, we, even though the market's closed, we've got non-farm payrolls coming out there, and then we start earnings. We kick off earnings into high gear this week of April. So a lot of you know a lot of things are coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, which is gonna you know can really really put a lot of tailwind behind the market you know one way or the other. Excuse me, up or down, um, and then. Fast forward out here to May, we've got a Fed meeting on the uh, May the 3rd. Now, the Fed has been pretty open about saying that they're going to continue the rate hikes and all that kind of stuff, and they were more adamant about it before the banking crisis problems and all that kind of stuff. Um, even now, they're, they're still saying they're going to do it, but on the if you look at um, uh, FedWatch tool, it's pricing in like a 54% chance of no you know, no right, no rate hike at this next meeting in May. So, you know, we'll see. I don't know. And, and again, that'll make a big difference on which way we go. Um, but my best guess right now is we bounce up here a little bit higher, retest this, and then probably fail um, with a big question mark. As and that takes a week or two, and then um, we have, you know. During that time, we have CPI, we have PPI, we have payrolls, we get into earnings season, and then do, does this earnings season, is it super strong and we take off this way, or is it a lot of misses and we go this way? And that's kind of where we are right now. So um, as always, as has been the case for a little while, we've been in this kind of, um, you know, for the last, here's the first of the year, that light, uh, light gray dotted line right there. You know, this has been wide range bound chop and it's been you know again it's been kind of tough to get on the right side of this because it doesn't stay on one side or the other for very long so the recommendation is just to to continue to trade lightly you know light small size um, trade tight stops you know if something's not working um, get out and look for another trade and that's that's been working very well uh, for me and for um, I run a uh, room at simpler called bias and that's been working very well for us uh, smaller size and just managing trades really tightly so that's what i've got for you today um we do have you know friday is a holiday so it'll be real inter interesting to see what happens tomorrow if we get another you know a bump higher which i think we will um and then we you know see what next week brings and we trade it from there and that's that's all we can do in this market really it's hard to get any kind of longer term viewer outlook uh with what we you know with what we've got right now in this market it's just um you know i i didn't coin the phrase but it's called a garbage market and it's just you know again you guys know if you're trading it so anyway that's what i've got uh for the short term the next couple of week outlook and um then we'll maybe get some clarity and we'll go from there so thanks for the time hope that helps and i'll see you guys at the next update thanks Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me over.